my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today we find ourselves in the not so distant future where corporations have superseded governments for global control. With the dawn of improved maglev technology, competition on the high speed rails of America is fierce. Now, you'll take the helm of a grand shipping company delivering goods to cities around the country. Profit is the name of the game as you strive to win the most credits. Freight Cars is a Tetris-style polyominal game for two to four players. It takes 30 minutes to play, it's for ages eight and up, and published by Quick Simple Fun Games. Today we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Let's get started. Freight Cars is for two to four players and you're going to be trying to earn the most credits by efficiently shipping train loads of goods. These might help you satisfy demands of different cities around America and they might even help you earn some extra bonuses from your corporation card that's secret from other players at the end of the game. You're gonna be drawing different freight cars into your hand, giving you more options as to which ones you wanna to try to fill with a certain amount of spots. As you fill and completely load freight cars, the supply of your polyomino style freight gets smaller, which means you have to be even more efficient when figuring out which cards to get. And this is important because the more of these that you can ship simultaneously, the more credits you'll get. And you're also keeping an eye on which cities have certain demands trying to get those before your opponents do. So let's see if you have what it takes to have the most credits in the end. To set up, each player is going to select a color and take all 16 freight pieces of that color. Those are polyomino tetra style pieces. They'll also take their scoring marker. Next, you'll take the scoreboard that's going to be tracking your credits in the game, which are points, and everyone's scoring markers next to the board for any colors that are not being played in this game. For example, if you're playing with less than four players, any of the pieces of those colors can be left back in the box. Next, you're going to find the corporation deck, and you're going to shuffle these cards, and you're going to deal three of these face down to each player. Now, each player is going to take these cards, secretly look at them, and they will keep one of these cards face down in front of them. You can look at these any time in the game, but don't let any of your opponents see. After all players have selected one card, the two cards discarded and the rest of the deck stay face down, and these will be removed from the game. Just place them back in the box. Don't let anyone see which ones they did not take. Now the corporation card is just a secret goal. Remember, you'll look at them before you figure out which one you want, but you'll keep it secret throughout the whole game. And they'll do different things. These will make more sense later. But keep in mind, you don't have to choose it this minute. If this is the first time playing the game and you're watching this video, keep those three cards face down in front of you and select one after you learn how to play the game by watching the rest of this video. But once you do select it, make sure you keep it face down. Remember, you can look at it at any time. Next, you're gonna find the freight deck. In this deck of cards, you're gonna look through it and find the end of game card and set it to the side just for a moment. For the rest of the cards, you're gonna shuffle this deck and then you're going to select a certain amount of cards depending on the amount of players. As you see here, for two players, you'll get 30 cards from this deck. For three players, 40 cards. And for four players, it's 50 cards. Once you have the right amount of cards from this deck, by the way, any cards that you're not using from this go back in the box. You'll take that specific amount of set of cards and you'll split it up into four approximately equal stacks. So here we have four stacks that are all even, approximately. Then you're gonna take the end game card and you're gonna shuffle it into any one of these stacks. So you'll shuffle that in. Once it's shuffled in, you'll place all the other three stacks on top of it. So that the end game stack somewhere in the bottom quarter of this whole deck is the end game card shuffled in. Then from that freight deck, you're gonna deal three freight cards face down to each player. Each player's gonna look at these secretly and decide which two to keep and which one to discard. Now you can look at these, but don't show them to your opponents. Now the cards that the players have discarded go next to the freight deck in the middle of the table, creating a tableau of face-up cards. Then, based on the table you see here, you'll reveal more freight cards so that you have a total amount of cards equal to what this table says. For example, in this case, we're playing a three-player game, and this shows you that there'll be a total of six cards, just like this face up, after everyone has discarded those cards into this tableau. So six cards for three players, seven for two, and five for four. 
Next, you'll find the city demand cards. You'll shuffle those up and you'll flip three of those cards face up next to the main display. Lastly, you'll decide randomly who's going to be the first player and they're gonna receive the active player standee, which is this thing that shows you that it's your turn. The object of the game is to have the most credits in the end and you'll be getting points in three different ways. One of them is shipping trains of freight cards that are full. Another is claiming open city demand cards that anyone can claim depending on the freight cars that you're filling this round. And the others are satisfying conditions of your secret corporation card like for each of these specific symbols we have at the end of the game, we'll get a certain amount of points for each of those. And as you gain credits during the game, you'll use the scoreboard to keep track of where you are. The game is played over multiple turns. Each player is going to be taking a turn and it's going to be going clockwise to the next player after that. On your turn, you're going to perform one of three possible actions. The first possibility is to draw a freight card into your hand. Now, when drawing a freight card, you could choose either any one of the face up ones here. Now, if you do so, when you take this, this will get refilled from the freight deck just like this. Or you could take one right off the freight deck itself, but you don't know what that's going to be before you draw it. Now, typically you're drawing those cards to give yourself some more options because one of the other things you can do on your turn is to play a freight card from your hand to load freight. And to do that, you'd place it face up in front of you, just like this, and you'd take your freight and load it onto this puzzle. Now, in doing this, you're only taking the pieces in your supply and adding them to the card. Now, they have to match perfectly on here, meaning you can't have anything overhanging outside of the grid, and you can never lay pieces on top of one another like that. They all have to sit flat, and everything has to be covered. No more, no less. And by the way, this number on the top right here shows you how many actual little squares make up the freight. Also keep in mind, you can turn over, rotate, and make the pieces look any way you want to make sure it fits. Now when doing this, you're going to place it to the right of your corporation card. But let's say we already have one like this. On your next turn, you might want to do this again and load another freight car. We'll tell you why this is important in just a moment. And now when doing that, you'll place it just to the right of the other freight cars you have loaded like this. Now, once you've loaded a freight car and it becomes the next player's turn, you cannot take any of the pieces off that freight car until you finally ship it, which we'll go over next. Now, this is important because on your next turn for an action, one of the three things you can do is to ship your train of loaded cars. Now here, we have two complete loaded cars. So we're gonna ship this whole train with these two cars filled with freight. Now you're going to earn a certain amount of credits based upon the number of cars that are in this train that you're shipping. In this case, there's just two of them. So in this table here below, we look at two and we see that you're going to make three credits. So depending on this table here, you will earn a certain amount of credits depending on how many of these cars you have filled with freight. And remember to update your credits on the scoreboard. Now we see the icons on the cars that we are shipping and here it is two of sort of the B's there. Now you'll look at the open city demand cards to see if any of them you can fulfill. Like this one, we had two Bs. So we can do that. This would give us an additional three credits on the scoreboard. When fulfilling city demand cards, you can fulfill as many cards as you can, but each resource on a freight car can only go to one card. For example, this went to this and this went to this. These cannot also start to go to another card, for example. Once you've updated the scoreboard for shipping your train and for any city demand cards, You'll put all of those loaded freight pieces back into your supply and you'll place the freight cars and any city cards underneath your corporation card to score possibly at the end of the game. If any city cards were claimed this turn, make sure you replace those cards that there's always three there from the deck. So in summary, on your train, you're taking one action, drawing a freight card, playing a freight card from your hand and loading it with freight or shipping your train of loaded cars. Once you're done with that, you pass this to the next player and it's their turn. Now, even when it's not your turn, you can start to plan for your next turn by trying to work on the sort of Tetris puzzle of that freight car. But if you're going to do this, make sure you keep it separate from the freight cars that you've already loaded in previous turns. That way, when it is your turn and it's, you want to load a specific car, you can just put it towards the end of your train there, and then it will be the next player's turn. It'll help speed the game up, but you'll be taking your time, you know, building your puzzle on other people's turns. Now, you'll continue taking turns in clockwise order until when a freight card needs to be drawn and it is the end of game card, each player is going to take one final turn, including the player that drew the end of game card. 
So in this case, if you were drawing this, this would get discarded, and now you would place this to replace the freight car that you were going to replace. Or if you were taking from the top of the deck for your turn and you got this, simply discard this out and take the next card. Now in this final round of play, if any city demand cards are claimed, do not replace them. And after that end of game card has come out and everyone has taken one final turn, you then have one more final round of shipping any loaded freight cars. So example, if on our last turn we got to here, we would then be able to ship these as following the normal rules. Then each player is going to reveal their corporation card and score it possibly accordingly. For example, it says for each of these freights that I delivered, I'd get a credit. So here I would get three credits, but it also has a maximum amount of credits that you can get with these. And at that point, the player with the highest number of credits is the winner. If it's tied, the player who shipped the most freight cars wins. And if it's still tied, then the player who scored the highest corporation bonus and credits wins. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into freight cars faster than you normally would if you had to read the rule book yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them since I'll be notified, but also so will quick, simple, fun games.